All right, today we are going to talk about the unforgivable sin, and even more importantly than that, have you committed it? Let's jump right into the scriptures on this. So there's a lot of mystery surrounding the unforgivable sin, and I know people get really worked up about it. And what's crazy is this is not what most of the Bible is about. Um, it's actually just like one verse that people like to take out of context, twist around, and mess with. Now, ultimately, the reason we get worried about the unforgivable sin is because we're assuming that we need God to forgive us, which that is a great assumption to start with, because all sin causes a problem between us and God, and then Jesus Christ forgives that sin, and so we live a life of faith and repentance and, and following Christ, and as he gradually sanctifies us and we sin less, we get close to the Lord and our walk with him, and that's really good. But then people are like, what about the unforgivable sin? Can I never be reconciled to God? Well, let's go straight to the passage. Let's look in Luke. If you will go to the book of Luke, and we go to chapter 12, get right in here to verse 10. This is where we're seeing it. Anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven, but the one who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. Now, the first thing I always talk about when we're looking at verses like this is we have to look at them in context. And so to look at this in context, you actually have to go to the last verse of chapter 11. And it says the scribes and Pharisees are opposing Jesus fiercely and cross-examining him so that they can trap him in something that he says. So Jesus is dealing with religious opposition here. And specifically, the religious opposition was trying to say that he wasn't the son of God. And so he's actually saying that they could be forgiven for not believing that he's the son of God, but they can't blaspheme the Holy Spirit. Now let's talk about how to blaspheme the Holy Spirit. Let me, let me make it very simple for you. When you take a work of God and a work of the Holy Spirit, because the Spirit is part of the Trinity of God, and you attribute that to the devil, that is the unforgivable sin. In Mark, it specifically seems to look at when the unforgivable sin comes up, that the context is looking at people taking the work of the Holy Spirit and attributing it to the devil. Uh, and these are people that have some level of discernment. They know that this is the Holy Spirit, but then they're specifically rejecting that and attributing it to the devil. It's a very specific sin. It's not one that most people have committed. It's not a sin that most people are in danger of committing. And then the question comes, well, is it really unforgivable? Well, what kind of level of forgiveness are we talking about? Because there's really no preclusion um, to salvation. There's no sin that Christ's blood cannot atone for. So the way that I see this is that there's no sin that Christ's blood can't atone for. Nowhere do we see limits on salvation like that. Anyone who is going to specifically take a work of the Holy Spirit and attribute that to the devil is at a place spiritually where they're probably a reprobate in a Romans 1 situation and they are deliberately doing something in defiance of God and they will never repent or turn from their sins and they are destined for eternal destruction anyway. So if you're worried that you've committed the uh, unforgivable sin, the fact that you're asking that question is a really good sign. I think the next thing that's going to be really helpful for you to look into is the basics of our salvation and whether or not we can lose our salvation. So I want you to check out this video that I've got on whether or not we can lose our salvation. Go there and take that teaching and pair that with this about that one verse that we see talking about whether or not we can commit the unforgivable sin and see what you think and then come back and tell me in the comments what you think.